Welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox videos. Right, continuing with our Defender overhaul, we've removed the seat ends and fitted some brand new shiny seat ends to our seat box. Now, these parts have to be riveted in, but it makes the seat box reusable again. We've got the seat ends from YRM Metal Solutions, which do um, all sorts of pieces for Defenders, Discoveries, or basically our Land Rovers. These parts here being of excellent quality, machined perfectly, and they also have the dimple in for the seatbelt bolts. The link for the YRM website is below this video on YouTube in the description. Alright, so basically the aluminium is spot welded in certain places, and this acts as a rivet to secure panels together. They will need drilling out accurately. I'll show you this later on in this tutorial. Just a little bit of advice here. Before you go putting rivets in, key up the surface of the paint underneath if you're gonna be painting. This way it will stick properly. Right, so what I'd advise first of all is use something like a three millimeter drill and drill the center of the spot rivet out first so you've got yourself a pilot hole. Basically, you want to be drilling a maximum of five millimeters. So piloting it first will make sure that your drill doesn't wander. Hopefully you'll get it as dead center as possible. We're using a 4.8 millimeter rivet. So five millimeters will be the maximum hole you can drill out. So basically you're gonna drill out the front of the seat box where the spot rivets are and then along at the top of the seat box. You also have an offset hole here and also on the front as well. Right, so once you've drilled them out, this um, side will not come off until you split it. Because the spot weld is not exactly perfectly round, there will be something that holds it on. Using a very thin chisel, or in this case I'm using a scraper, doesn't take much with a soft hammer uh, making sure that you don't bend any of the other panels it's just a matter of just splitting what's holding the uh, panel on as you can see here we're taking it very very carefully but you'll see that will come off like so plastic covering on the aluminium basically it can be picked off if it's slightly warmer, it will come off easier. You don't really want to leave this on. There's no need to use this as an anti-corrosion protector because aluminium with aluminium will not corrode to any great extent. The great thing about this panel, it is accurate. So matching up to where the other panel sat before is quite easy. Now I'd advise to clamp it down gently with a G cramp on either end and then make sure it's squared up before you go ahead and drill holes. Now to measure, you could measure between this point and this point if you want to, to get it perfectly accurate before you fit it. And then drill a couple of holes, fit the rivets in to either side. This will keep it secure for when you're drilling the rest of the rivet holes. For this job, we are using 4.8 millimeter rivets. So that's measured this way, 4.8. And the length, which I prefer, is 19 millimeters. Right, so basically a 19 mil rivet will pull up and look like this. As I've said, and I'll keep saying it, five millimeters is the maximum. This will give you a nice snug hole for the rivet to pull up into. Choice of tools, you have quite a few different types. This is a uh, hand operated riveter. This is hard work using one of these. You would only really need one of these if you're doing one or two rivets. However, it does work just as effectively, although it will make your hands ache after a little while. This one is the Lazy Tongues. This is much better for uh, riveting and it makes easy work for uh, a lot of rivet work to do. However, you need to push against the work when you are riveting. They are fairly cheap and reliable, whereas this one here is slightly more expensive but more useful as it's a combination of rivet tool or a rivnut tool. Much easier to pull rivets up and you also get facility for fitting rivnuts. Also, the benefit, if you can afford it and you need it, is the uh, amount of fittings that you can use. 
This will also go up to the size where you can pull up small mono bolts with it. If you keep watching our series, I'll show you exactly what they are. If you're into uh, bodybuilding, then this will help you build certain muscle groups as well if you have a lot of riveting to do. I'll also show you the air-powered riveter. This is more for industrial use for doing thousands of rivets a day. Very hard wearing and labour saving. Okay, anyway, enough of the uh, tool pornography. We'll get on and finish off fitting these aluminium rivets to the seat box. Riveting itself on the seat box is not going to look out of place since the Land Rovers are mainly riveted anyway. This edge along here could do with knocking down very lightly with a soft headed hammer or a piece of wood. Try not to uh, corrugate it or dent it. So basically we've removed the parts that are rotten and turned the seat box into something that is usable and very presentable. Okay, as I stated earlier, if you're going to be painting this, which I would imagine you will be, is to key down the box around the area underneath the rivets. Now, using a wire brush is a bit aggressive, and this can be filled with spray putty. Um, the reason is, is if you rivet and then key it down, you'll find that you can't get all the paint underneath or around the rivet. This means the paint won't stick properly. You can see on this heater box that we flattened earlier, it's going to need a lot more work to be able to uh, paint it. Using an orbital sander is the best way to um, key off or um, sand down a flat surface or a panel. You can see the differences in paint layers. It's because the panel's quite uneven. Preparation is the key to a good paint job. Fresh aluminium needs to be keyed down and it needs to be etch primed. This is two pack, which is etch primer and an activator. This stuff is actually quite nasty to the respiratory system and it's highly flammable. A certain amount of information is available on the tins if you're spraying or even brush painting, but get a data sheet as well. Now, you can spray aluminium and prime it, but because you have a certain bare edges after keying down, uh, like up here, you're going to need to prime this with etch primer, and this is also on the aluminium rivet heads. This will give you the best possible results when you are painting it. 